Hello my friends. Originally, only 13 wild rabbits were brought to Australia from England in 1859 by a wealthy man named Thomas Austin. Since then, to this day, the overpopulation of wild rabbits and their negative impact on nature and agriculture has always left the government and many farmers in Australia with a headache to find solutions and appropriate countermeasures. Over the past 100 years, governments and farmers in Australia have adopted a variety of measures to control wild rabbit populations, such as building fences and destroying rabbit burrows. Even biological control measures such as infecting rabbits with viruses and releasing them into the wild have been applied. However, due to favourable living conditions and extremely fast reproduction, the number of wild rabbits in Australia has always increased rapidly. Even though at one point 98% of the wild rabbits on this continent were exterminated. Female wild rabbits usually start breeding as soon as they reach five to six months of age. Currently, female feral rabbits in Australia usually give birth to four litters a year, and each litter usually has around seven to 10 kits born. Yes, that's right, kits is the name for baby rabbits. Baby wild rabbits spend most of their time living in burrows and they are only allowed out when the mother wild rabbit feels it's safe. These baby rabbits will feed on their mother's milk for about four weeks before starting to nibble on food. According to research by the Centre for Invasive Species Solutions in Australia, most wild rabbits will separate from their mothers and begin an independent life as soon as they are weaned. It is estimated that there are currently about 287 million wild rabbits living in Australia, of which about 177 million rabbits are born each year. Hundreds of millions of rabbits are distributed over 71% of Australia's land area, and they are found anywhere there is grass and that they can burrow. In the wild, young wild rabbits are often favourite prey of carnivores such as dingoes, feral cats or crows. However, the number of wild rabbits killed each year by predators is a tiny fraction of the total number of wild rabbits living in Australia. After about four to five weeks, these wild rabbits have been weaned and start a new independent life. They will burrow and live wherever there is a food source and less disturbances like in a backyard, in a garden or on a hillside. Basically anywhere in Australia could be an ideal habitat for this highly adaptable animal except in areas with a lot of clay and sand, like in the northeast of South Australia. Currently, New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria are the states with the largest wild rabbit populations in Australia, of which New South Wales is home to around 65 million wild rabbits. The negative impact that hundreds of millions of feral rabbits have on Australia's ecosystems include the depletion of vegetation and natural grasslands associated with overgrazing by wild rabbits. It is said that just one wild rabbit 
could make an entire lawn at an international standard football field impossible to grow grass. An adult wild rabbit usually weighs about 3.3 pounds and needs to consume 7% of their body weight each day. The burrowing habits of hundreds of millions of wild rabbits in Australia also causes severe erosion and destruction of the landscape in which they live. In addition, another negative effect of wild rabbits on Australia can be thought of as the habit competition with native animals. Hundreds of millions of wild rabbits also threaten some 322 species of flora and fauna, and this cost the Australian government more than $215 million a year. To this day, Australia's wild rabbit population is 11 times larger than the country's population, and they always have been a major problem for the ecosystem and agriculture. In response to the rampant wild rabbits, the Australian government allows anyone to hunt them in unlimited numbers. In addition, the government also encourages people to organise wild rabbit hunts to reduce the number of this invasive species. Along with that, biological control measures are always being studied to find viruses that can kill wild rabbits in large numbers. In short, just like the wild boar problem in the United States, the wild rabbit problem in Australia will still cause headaches for the government and farmers for many years to come to find effective control measures for this invasive species. In addition to feral rabbits, Feral cats are also an invasive species that causes many negative impacts on Australia's ecosystem. It is estimated that there are currently 6.3 million feral cats living in Australia. Each year, millions of feral cats in Australia kill around 1.1 billion mammals, 399 million birds, and around 93 million frogs. According to a 2010 study, each feral cat in Australia kills around 740 wildlife each year. Feral cats threaten the survival of more than 100 native species in Australia. They have caused the extinction of a number of ground-dwelling birds and small to medium-sized mammals. In addition, they are also the main cause of the decline of many endangered species of animal strains, such as pangolins or bandicoots. Currently, trapping and hunting feral cats is the most commonly used solution to control this invasive species. Every year, about 63,000 feral cats are killed in Australia, in addition to tens of thousands of other feral cats trapped and sent to animal shelters across the country. Hello my friends. With only 25.3 million acres of land used for agriculture and about 79,500 active farms, California has a lot less farming than Texas. However, in recent years, California has always been the state with the highest agricultural revenue in the United States, with about $51 billion worth, nearly double the $27 billion for Texas, which has 127 million acres of land used for production. If California is considered an independent country, its agricultural revenue is even more than the agricultural revenue of other developed countries such as Germany, Italy or Mexico. And in today's video, we're going to the farms and ranches in California to see how farming and ranching work in this state. 
Currently, the most popular agricultural products in California can be mentioned as strawberries, grapes, almonds, cattle, and dairy products. In addition, California agriculture is also famous for its large-scale vegetable fields, with thousands of migrant workers working during the harvest season. This is what's going on at a dairy farm in Tulare County, South Central California. Here, about 20 one-month-old dairy calves are being fed by farm workers. Currently, Tulare is also the county with the most dairy cows in California, with about 457,000 cows living there. In addition to the calves raised on the outside, there are dozens of other dairy calves in the barn, and these are mostly milk calves purchased from neighboring dairy farms. After only 24 hours after birth, all dairy calves will be separated from their mothers, which is considered the dairy industry standard. It also helps to prevent infection in calves from exposure to contaminated feces. In recent years, California has always been the state with the largest number of dairy cows in the country, with about 1.75 million cows, and distributed across 1,100 farms. Ranked second is Wisconsin, with 1.2 million cows. Currently, most dairy cows in California are raised on farms, and they spend most of their time living in barns. Only about 27% of dairy cows in the state are regularly grazed on pastures. Approximately 13 million tonnes of silage is produced in California each year, and about 35% of it is used on dairy farms, with the remainder mainly used on other livestock farms. Today, Milk is California's most valuable agricultural commodity, and milk production generates about $57.7 billion in economic activity in the state. In addition, the California dairy industry provides approximately 180,000 high quality jobs year round. Goodbye Dairy Farms, we're going now to the California horse farms to see how hundreds of thousands of horses in this state are raised. According to the statistics from the American Horse Council, in 2022, in California, there were about 653,000 horses living, of which there are about 7,000 wild horses. This is also the state with the second largest number of horses in the country second only to Texas, with about 939,000 horses there. After birth, the foals will live on the farm for about three days with their mother before they are released into the pastures to run around and learn how to eat there. A foal needs to suckle 25 to 35 pounds of milk each day equivalent to 30% of their body weight. Currently, the majority of horses in California are raised in counties such as Ventura, Riverside and San Diego, in which the city of Norco in Riverside County is also known as Horse Town of the United States. This is a herd of horses in Ventura County. Every day, about 50 horses here will be herded by the ranchers to the pasture, about two miles from the farm to feed. Each day, an adult horse needs to eat a feed equivalent to 2% of their body weight. Of that, 90% of the feed horses use is grass, and the rest is a mixture of corn and soybeans, which is fed when they return to the farm. 
in addition to the horses that are regularly grazed on the pasture. In California, there have also been thousands of horses raised on the farm, and most of the horses here will be trained to serve in races or in the tourist calendar. In the late afternoon, dozens of horses grazing in the pasture will be herded back to the farm to rest and avoid the attack of predators, such as coyotes or wild cats. This is a horse gathering area next to the border with Mexico. Here, hundreds of horses are waiting to be transported to horse meat factories in Mexico for slaughter. Although the slaughter of horses for meat is illegal in the United States, there are still some illegal horse meat factories and tens of thousands of horses are still slaughtered each year across the country. According to a report by the American Horse Council, the horse industry in California creates about 54,200 direct jobs and a total of 130,200 jobs across the state each year. In addition to livestock farms, another famous agricultural product that we cannot ignore when it comes to California is almonds. Currently, California is home to the largest almond acreage in the United States, with about 1.33 million acres. This also makes the United States the largest almond producer in the world. In California, almond planting usually begins in mid-February and ends in late March. With more than a million acres of farmland used for farming, California accounts for 99.9% .9 of almond production in the United States. This is what is obtained after shaking hundreds of almond trees. Next, this machine will be used to collect billions of almonds into a straight line before they are transferred to specialized vehicles. According to USDA statistics, in 2021, California produced 2.8 million pounds of almonds and 52% of those were exported, bringing in $4.7 billion in revenue. Each year, the almond industry in California creates about 104,000 jobs, of which the number of workers directly working at almond farms is about 21,000 people. Here's what's going on at a garlic field in the San Joaquin Valley in Northern California. In addition to almonds, California also leads the country in garlic production. In 2021, California has about 24,000 acres of farmland used to grow garlic, and the yield is 376 million pounds, accounting for 91% of the country's production. Each year, California's garlic industry also provides regular jobs for about 11,000 people, of which about 7,000 workers are employed to harvest the garlic.